The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher, Chapter 29, Smoke Santa's eight reindeer pulled the sleigh through the sky much faster than the Christmas Saurus had pulled William's wheelchair, and so they found themselves flying over William's town in no time at all. That's my house right there, the little wonky one, cried William excitedly, as he saw the warm glow of the morning sun turn all the snowy rooftops orange. Santa steered the deer down to William's rooftop and landed with no trouble at all. Wow, thanks, William called to the eight wonderful deer. Right, let's get you inside, Santa said as he backflipped down from the sleigh and picked up William in his wheelchair with one arm, no problem. He skipped over to the chimney and placed William in his chair, frighteningly close to the edge. That's tiny, we'll never fit down there, William exclaimed, staring at the tinsy hole in the top of the chimney. Santa said nothing, but smiled at William. Suddenly, William had the most bizarre sensation that he was shrinking, or everything else was growing. Either way, in the blink of an eye, the tiny hole in the top of William's chimney flew chimney flue was now an enormous hole big enough for at least two santas to fit down i'd better go first said santa i wouldn't want to land on you and with that he did a large double twisty backflip into the darkness of the chimney follow me whoa william thought he stared down into the dark black hole and suddenly wasn't so sure he had the courage to do it that's when everything started shrinking around him or was he growing whatever it was the hole in the chimney was getting smaller there was no time to think. It was now or never. He closed his eyes, took a deep breath and gave his wheels a big, hard push. He fell down the chimney as fast as a rocket, spinning wildly out of control. He could feel the walls tightening around him as the chimney flue got smaller and smaller. Then he saw something very large and very dark coming towards him very fast. Swish! William's wheels never touched the ground. He was swooped out of the fireplace in some sort of thick, ropey net. Gotcha! He heard a voice cackle as something awful and stinky stung his nostrils. Pipe smoke! It was the hunter. He was there in William's house. They jumped right into a trap. William twisted and punched his fists through the holes in the net as the hunter hoisted him into the air and hung him in the middle of the room from the ceiling fan. I knew it! I told you, Growler! I told you they'd come back! What did I say? I said, there's no way they'll keep that little wheelchair boy up there in the North Pole. They'll bring him home, and when they do, we'll be there waiting. That's what I said, and I was right. Ha! The hunter boasted in his wickedly posh voice, with thick, smelly smoke pouring from his nostrils, like a dragon as he cackled. William wriggled as hard as he could, but the ropes from the net held him tight in his chair, dangling from the ceiling fan. He stopped fighting for a moment as he swung helplessly and took a glance around his living room. As the room spun, he caught a glimpse of an awfully, terribly horrid sight. Santa was lying in a large heap on the floor below him, with his hands tied tightly behind his back so that he couldn't move. Santa! William cried. Silence! Boy, or your daddy is done for, spat the hunter, standing with one foot triumphantly on Santa's back. His sniper rifle raised and aimed, ready to fire at any moment. William looked to where it was pointing and saw the most awful thing he'd seen yet. His dad was tied up with thick ropes in the corner of the room, staring back at William through crack cracked glasses with wide, terrified eyes. Growler was pacing back and forth, menacingly baring his teeth whenever Mr Trundle tried to speak. William instinctively lashed out again, punching through the holes in the net, trying to reach the horrid hunter. Now listen to me, you stupid, puny little child. I'm going to speak slowly so that do that that your undersized brain can understand me, and I, I'm only going to say this once. The hunter looked William directly in the eye, and William saw how wretchedly evil this man truly was. There was no chance he was ever returning to the nice list. Where is that flying dinosaur? He whispered in the most terrifying whisper William had ever heard. Don't tell him, William, Santa mumbled, struggling to get his words out as he was lying face down with his mouth full of beard. Shut it, fatty pants. I'll deal with you later, barked the hunter. Leave him alone, screamed William. Everything fell silent as he swung himself round so that he was facing the hunter. William had had enough. You're just an evil, horrid, nasty, sick, twisted man, and that's why you'll never find the Christmasaurus. Tears were streaming down William's face and dripping off his chin. 
He's in the safest, most magical place in the world now, and you'll never find it. You'll never get back there. Eliam, don't say any more, Santa called, but William couldn't hear his muffled plea. He was crying and shouting with so much emotion that he just couldn't help the next thing he said from coming out of his mouth. You'll never find him because you're a rotten, stinking, trophy-hunting killer, William screamed, and they'll never give you Cosmo's converting candy cane. It was at that very moment, as he pointed his fist at the hunter, that the small piece of his own magical candy cane that he'd secretly hidden flew out from his sleeve and hurtled through the air. It shimmered and sparkled magically as it spun in front of the hunter's evil black eyes before landing with a delicate clink at his feet. The hunter let out the most wicked, triumphant laugh, blowing stinky smoke from his pipe around the room as he swiped up the delicious-looking piece of magic candy from the floor. I have one now. That flying dinosaur's head is practically mine. Mine! All mine! He cackled and puffed. Puffed and cackled as he danced around the room like a maniac, firing victory shots from his rifle into the trundle's living room ceiling while waving the piece of magical red and white candy cane around like he'd won a golden ticket. He had a way to the North Pole. Nothing could stop him now. Then all of a sudden, the hunter heard a sound that made his heart stop. It came from out in the street. Rawr! It was the unmistakable roar of a dinosaur. The Christmasaurus was here. Thank you for listening.